ととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととと
Oh, that's hot! I'm not sure where I'm going with this. So Mezukazu has been on the game for a long time. Drew Shoujo since the 50s, Rum Comp since the 60s, Ultraman also in the 60s, and Horror since ever. Pages overflowing with black ink, grotesque imageries, and facial expressions that sucks you in. Chances are that if you've been around with this hobby for a while, even if you haven't really read any of Umezukazu works, you probably already have, or likely will eventually end up seeing the face. A face overflowing with panic, fear, shock. A expression that could only be achieved by opening your mouth as wide as possible and screaming with all you have. It's iconic, and an iconic treatment they got it right. Women's works received the most varied amounts of adaptations, animation, movies, TV specials, movies with shitty practical effects, TV specials with shitty computer graphics, Gutkimation, Santa Claus, a musical, a lot, lots of movies, lots of them actually, a lot of them. But there's an anomaly on those adaptations. Let me go on a quick tangent, you see? Be it a cash grab, be it a passion project of sorts, I was never really into this kind of western movie adaptations of manga. Oh, you see where I'm going to. I never really gave much thought into it. And when I did, I never thought we'd find something that would pique my interest enough for me to watch it. Well, I never thought that would be so simple, but they found a way, they found a way. Or rather, a way existed all along. One of the most, if not the most popular work by Umezu Kazuo, and reminiscent of my current predicament, The Drifting Classroom. A 1972 manga of a school that gets transported into a barren wasteland of nothing after an earthquake hits and students have to learn how to survive in extreme conditions. Did you know that this manga got a movie adaptation in 1995 called Drifting School? Which was also the inception of Drake Bell's acting career. And if you don't believe me, the first shot of the movie is Drake Bell reading The Drifting Classroom. And here we go. Oh, what's this? So according to this document, I am legally by law obligated to tell you that this video contains free jump scares. Nah, I'm not a dick. I do have to warn you that I will be spoiling a lot of the Drifting Classroom manga. So if you want to read the Drifting Classroom without spoilers, you are free to leave this video. No problems. It's very advised, actually. I quit making anime reviews. Now I'm a movie reviewer. Hell yeah. I watched two movies in 2016 and 2017. I can do it. This doesn't even fit my head. So the way the movie begins is already a mess, because there's three different storylines that eventually merge with each other, but they keep interchanging between them and it gets kinda disorientating. The first storyline follows Kenny, who heads to the school to watch a baseball game and meets one of our main characters. Hey, Kenny! You come to see my amazing new invention? I came to see the game. Oh, but you gotta see this. It's much better than my hologram girl. Better than that hologram girl? Those are some fighting words there, buddy. Also, judging by that cut. Oh, but you gotta see this. It's much better than my hologram girl. We can assume we are in safe hands on the editing department. Thanks, uh, Mitsu-chan. So the segment is here to present the school, the characters, and what in his short life, Drake Bell got drilled on his small head what acting was. <laughs> Monk guys play rock. Take it hard on the rack. Switch, nothing but the net. We're catching up. I'm so exciting. Yeah. King is rumored to have special. <laughs> God damn, they keep showing him for a single second and cutting away from him. Okay, sorry. There's actually four storylines. One of them is of Kenny's mother heading to the school. The following storyline is of a cult leader named Arthur King, who has the power of hypnotizing people. King is rumored to have special hypnotic powers which he uses to convert unsuspecting people into followers of his bloodthirsty cult. 
Of course, we know that hypnosis doesn't quite work that way. Oh, being self-aware, huh? Cute, very cute. His coat comes and starts a shootout, which results on the death of Jerry Seinfeld. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Jerry's dead in 1995. Now he won't have to be moved. Rest in peace, Jerry. Rest in peace. I'm gonna bye bye. King Ben hypnotizes one of the cops and makes his escape. Look, Mom, I know how to shoot. The last storyline is on the Pentagon, where military people discuss problems with a nuclear satellite. Whoa! Space drift! At present, the angle of trajectory is 36.4 decimeters. That's not an angle. Wait a second. This is the iCarly guy. Who wrote this lie? Never in my entire life have I eaten one pair of pants. Ah, this is getting dangerously close to Nickelodeon. I don't like this. I'm going to stop mentioning them now. Most likely it will explode on contact with the planet's surface. Hey, you want to retake that? No? Don't worry. I wouldn't. Two. In short, the satellite's going to crash in Los Angeles. In... How long again? It's going to crash into Los Angeles in about two and a half hours. Two and a half hours? What the hell? Why are you people so calm? Well, we're lucky then. There are no human beings in Los Angeles. Only cockroaches. <laughs> okay, makes sense. So the plan to not let the cockroaches die is to kill the satellite with the Star Wars. To kill it. Guess it's going to be taken care of by Star Wars. Yep, cute the satellite with the Star Wars, just like I said. <clears throat> General, the president wishes you good luck. That's nice. Thanks, Obama. Uh, wait, no, he, he's, he's not the president. Thanks, Bill Clinton. Quick reminder, they have two and a half hours to take down the satellite. How, how are you going to do this? Fire. The beam is functioning, General. Tracking is normal. Commander, what's happening down there? Oh my God, what have we done? Shut yeah, what have you done? Impossible. Can you explain? I, I didn't really understand what happened. And it's after this that all storylines merge together. The car chase ends and Arthur King arrives at the school. Kenny's mother also arrives at the school, but she's being held back by the cops? Why is this happening? When did this happen? Lights start flashing on the school, people start falling down, screaming. The news crews is here, this woman screams as if she's understanding something bad was happening. What is this madness? It's all happened in a time span of 30 seconds. It's too much for someone watching to digest. Earthquake! Earthquake! Throw the puppets up the sky! Okay, maybe not an earthquake, but we do have Bubba Smith looking as confused as I am. And so they drift away and the school disappears. Things finally calm down and we meet the main group, composed of people who you and me won't remember the name of, but we do learn that Kenny has... It's my stupid asthma. We get more knowledge of the predicament, in true drifting classroom fashion. Phone's dead, no energy. Now if anybody's hurt, don't move, we'll get to you as soon as we can. The rest of you just stay where you are. We need your utmost cooperation. Of course our protagonists do the shit kid thing to do and begin to explore until they meet the nerd kid. Paul! I'm busy right now, come back later. Damn it! This acting, ugh. Damn it! And he also has what he calls a ray gun. Because of course he, ha he has a ray gun. I hear it can hold my supposedly very dangerous weapon. Crash. Watch this. And save your applause till after I win the Nobel Peace Prize. For making a gun. The ray gun currently doesn't work though. So the nerd kid is left with the task of turning the generator on. Where have you people been? I expect more responsible behavior from you. Sorry, Coach. Have you seen Greg Bell? No, why? I was hoping they were with you. The coaches leave the school to search for the missing people and find a car with claw marks and a blood issue. Ah, oh, scary. And the coaches find a police car and a dead police officer who got shot. He's dead. Looks like he was shot. 
What in God's name is going on around here? I don't know. Why you just said? They fight a gun, hell yeah, pew pew, man. While the main group is outside, Arthur King mind controls some students yeah. and kills the other responsible teacher. I have something very serious to tell you. Mr. Martin is dead. What? Ah, oh, man, he died? Come mm. on. <sighs> Also, when the coach gets the scene, there's three loud slam sounds. What are these? Why are they in? Hearts my ears. We'll have to keep one guard at each door. Who's had any experience with firing a gun? Okay. That's kind of concerning, but okay. Coach, if we're going to be here for any length of time, we're going to need to do something about the food. You know, I've searched this whole kitchen and there isn't much. We'll deal with it tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow, when we finally learn we're surrounded by desert and we should finally have any reason at all to actually care about food. Only then we'll care about food. You figure out who gets the first watch. Am I the only one concerned that this teacher just gave a student a loaded gun? Here, you take this. I'll be back in a second. My feelings exactly. We also get to learn that Kenny decided to go to the game instead of going to the doctor. He always puts this pleasing cold stethoscope on my chest. How else is he gonna check for your asthma, honey? He can at least warm it up first. Anyway, I can't miss the game today. This comes to play later, but only to this video, not really to the movie. So tomorrow comes and they learn that the world outside is a desert. A shocker. Bah! Maybe we died and went to heaven. They venture a bit on the desert that's full of plants, by the way, and they find a monument that contains their names engraved on it. On the original series, this should be the time the possibility of the school have been transported into the future is considered by the characters. Here we just go! Here's my name, and Coach Jackson's, and John's. And here's Akiko's name. I don't see my name. You're right. Everybody's name is on this except Kenny's. Like they built a memorial for us. But why isn't my name here? What about me? I don't know. I just don't know. Inside the school, King starts mind controlling everyone. Except this very specific group of kids for God knows why. What the hell is going on here? All of you, wake up! Thanks, Mitsu-chan. Things were supposed to go this way. I wonder why this happened. Huh? Oh wait, they can do the same thing! Hey, hey! Oh shit, he's taking my gun! Is anyone else seeing this? From there, the scene becomes a major mess. The hypnotized students lightly kick this girl to death. I mean lightly kick this girl to death. I mean lightly. King shoots the coach and we need six different shots to present that. And they start an action scene and it, it seems some students are not mind control anymore because they run away. H how does the mind control work? Are they mind control or not? Is this just so there aren't many people fighting? Leave him alone! I'll throw and slap your butt! Ah! Jesus Christ, this guy stop kick 10 year old Drake Bell! So King opens way to run away, and they leave the coach who just got shot unattended to chase King. The ordeal ends with the other coach being shot, while Kenny hops in the back of the car and King drives away. They give chase, but they don't bring the machine gun with them, what? Wow, this court looks really clean. Who, who decided to clean this place after the earthquake hit? Damn it, guys, where'd he go? How did you lose him if 30 seconds ago this was your situation? Something that also happens that is a throwback to the manga is that the main character, when very desperate, calls for his mother and she puts things in specific places so that they can help the main character in the future. Here, Kenny's mother feels that Kenny needs a weapon. After this, we have 5 minutes, 5 whole minutes of King chasing Kenny and the girl. Sometimes he's close, sometimes far away, sometimes very far away, sometimes very close. None of the times he uses his gun, 
Why is he even chasing them? Can he either conjure his psychic powers to learn when his mom put the weapon, or he's having a heart asthma attack? Is Drake Bell going to be okay? It wouldn't be nice if he died before Dragon Joss would please take care of him. And the weapon is. Yes. Is, that, is, is that a spray can? Really, mom? Kids up, Joker. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Thanks. Thanks, mom. Thanks, mom. Thanks. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Can't say I'm not impressed. Ah, the perspective. So scary. Let me drop my gun. Our heroes use the chance to escape. Couldn't we use some place with less vegetation? The guy who killed our teachers tried to mind control our friends into a cult that technically we shouldn't even know the name of because we were never told what his name is, he's being attacked by a monster. A monster you say, well that sucks. Haha, <laughs> the next part isn't even recorded at 1am, one month later, haha. <laughs> Why did you even put a mind controlling character on this movie? One where mind controls are not even consistent. Hell, even while he was driving to the park before the chase, the girl was getting pretty chummy with him, which made me think she was being mind controlled. But just a minute later, he's pointing a gun at her as if she's a hostage. And even if I consider this as just him making a fancy pose to go with his eccentric character, as soon as Kenny appears, she runs away, so. What's up with that? <coughs> Our male protagonist finds the pistol, shoots all the bullets on a stationary monster, and they all head back to the school where everyone is sick, and the Japanese kids controlling the place with an iron fist. <coughs> How come I get so little food? Look, there obviously isn't that much food left, so for those who are stronger, get more. They shouldn't get more. The sick students should be first. Those sick kids are just gonna die anyway. The strongest get the most. Survival the fittest. You're a bad person. We need to take care of each other. I'm in charge here. If you don't like it, you can leave. Uh, why'd you have to get the Asians in here? The guy is okay compared to... Uh, things in this movie? But the coach! Don't let the emotion get to you. Concentrate on the game. No more mistakes. Okay. The girl! Heavy accents. Or is it accents? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm being a hypocrite. Let's forget this one. Who do you think you are deciding who can eat and who can't? Look, you don't decide when we eat or anything else. That's right. I'm in charge here. I decide who eats. And when you eat, I even decide when you shit. Hey man. Kids could be watching this video, please watch a profanity. So the Asian kid picks up the gun, hands it to the next guy and gets beaten into submission. And we're done with that problem. After that, we get taken to the past of the future, good old present. Where Kenny's mother is at the incident site, gets surrounded out of nowhere by the news crews, and the news guy recognizes her. You were there, weren't you? Your son was one of the children at the school, wasn't he? Yes. Do you think that, that maybe, somehow, that those kids are still alive? Where did that come from? Yes, Why, in any logical sense, you would believe those kids are... If even the news people knows about Kenny disappearing, why is his name not on the rock? Oh my god, anyways, anyways, the fat nerd kid is doing some research and comes across some sort of cave with some sort of working panel with working energy. Okay, I just want to pause here for a second. When I first watched this, I thought this guy just magically learned about this cave, but that isn't the case. Turns out that he found the cave earlier on the middle of the chase scene and I just missed it. Here's how they presented him fighting the cave. Oh, Kenny, Nancy. 
a six second segment of him looking at a non-specific feature just like any other in that park and thinking there must be something in there so I guess this is better than him just magically learning about it and this isn't even supposed to happen for seven more years Don't you have to be strong for all of us you're the only one who can do it you have to be strong for the rest of us was that a motorcycle noise? Look, I don't know where we are. You could, couldn't retake that. You couldn't even retake that. You do understand the scenario of the movie you're working with, right? Everyone has pneumonia. <laughs> and it's up to the A team to find medicine. So they drive to uh, a TV station and they find some tapes. I mean, if we could watch these tapes, maybe we could find out what happened to us. This sentence bothers me a lot. Because saying, if we watch these tapes, maybe we can tell what happened to us, would only make sense if they actually believe something happened to them and not around them. It's incredible. The whole city. The whole city has been wiped out. I don't think it was an earthquake. It didn't feel like one. What do you think it was? Well, there were some strange bursts of light before the building started shaking. Could have been a comet, meteor, World War III. The only time the situation was hinted was when they found the rock. But they only went, oh look, it's my name. It's her name. It's her name. His name. Oh, name. My name isn't here. I wonder why. The sentence would only make sense if they believe they are in the future. Because they would also understand that the desert wasn't caused by some sort of war or bomb that would also have wiped out the new station at the same time they suffered the earthquake on the school which would make it impossible for the new station to cover any kind of news at all because they've been wiped out by the bomb it would take a single i wonder if we are in the future from anyone for me to not be bothered by this what i'm starting to believe here is that they went with as long as the audience knows they're on the future we don't have to bring that up. Mom, put it in the park. What are you talking about? But if I never bring it up the possibility on the movie, how would the audience know? Well, there's two ways the audience could know that. The first one is a trailer where they're explicitly saying they are 200 years in the future. The government attempt at destroying the nuclear satellite brings about chaos and destruction that sends Monroe High School 200 years into a desolate future. The students think the world has been destroyed, Incredible. only to tragically discover that they are the ones who have vanished into a future world devoid of present day life forms. Devoid of present day life forms. Devoid of present day life forms. And the second one is that apparently this movie was re released in 1997 as Lost in Time, which makes pretty clear they are lost in time. There you go, that's how you know. Actually, now that I see the Drifting School cover and get a tagline, can their adventure into the future change the mistakes of the past? Holy shit, that's the Drifting Classroom as fuck. But damn, they fail to deliver that. Notably because on the Drifting Classroom, the world's demise happened because of the environment going to shit. And supposedly, the kids have to reconstruct this destroyed world. On this movie, the message is, Nuclear powers the devil and fuck you, government! As told by a total of 10 middle-aged people rioting. There's not really anything we can do to fix the mistakes of the past. Unless you mean uh, not using nuclear power and not having a government. Actually, I don't think it's ever made clear what happened to the world to end up like this. It just... It's just like this. Thank God, I conveniently brought the Energizer ray gun we can use to energize the TV. So of course they find the exact tape of the exact day of the exact segment of their school vanishing 200 years in the future. Where Kenny's mother is being interviewed and Kenny starts talking to her. And she starts replying. He's in a TV studio. Mom, we need anti. What does he say? He's talking anti to me. something. Antibiotics. We need antibiotics. We need... They need medicine, they need medicine, they need antibiotics. 
Kenny, where do you want me to leave the medicine? So she actually puts medicine on the TV studio inside the wall. How she was allowed to put it there? I don't know. How she was not branded the crazy lady from the news? I don't know. So hooray, they find the medicine. So maybe she said the last time didn't survive the time barrier. So this time she sent it in a strong box. Ah, uh, titanium, to be precise. Oh, so now they acknowledge the time skip as if it was common prior set knowledge. Cute, very cute. Right, so tell me again how did that tape survive the time barrier? <laughs> the screams, it keeps cutting. Thanks, Mitsu chan, thanks. Oh my god, I love that. Like, I love that for real. If the monster was portrayed like that the whole movie, I would have liked this movie way more. Because the fat kid used the ray gun to energize the TV is out of power. So they run away, but one of the kids stay back as a sacrifice. And there's absolutely no sense of urgency portrayed on the scene, so it feels like he just wanted to be mauled by the monster on purpose. <laughs> And so they get back to the school, where King is picking out on their food and it's kind of embarrassing to watch honestly. The idea here is that King is becoming a monster, but the way they chose to portray that is to make him go <laughs> Baby. Help! Help me! Help me! The fat nerd kid finally has the chance to use the Reagan. Die! Sucking slime bag! Glad we're done with that. One kid goes crazy and jumps out of the window. Glad we're done with that. He's glad to. He's very glad to. The medicine is working already. Thank you so much, Sakiko. We're really lucky that you're here with us. They didn't even try bother to record scenes again. I had a really weird dream last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All you guys were living in houses made of stone and mud. You were farmers, and you were growing your own food. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Really subtle, really subtle. I think the problem of trying to do a movie about the drifting classroom is that they didn't have time to make the audience feel the struggles of the characters. The movie just dumps information at you. They start considering food the first night before they even know what's happening. Everyone gets sick and there's power struggles on the second night. Yeah, you see them fighting, but it doesn't feel real. The tape scene has the teenagers look at juice and food commercials to play with the idea that they haven't eaten properly in a while. And right after that, you have King pigging out on food. Because if I go by the amount of times the sun rose at dawn, the movie ends on the fourth day. They have food, they're absolutely not that hungry. I know I shouldn't compare this too much to the manga and judge the movie as is, but the manga's a heavy downward spiral. You very much feel the struggle. Right at the beginning, someone tries to hog all the food because he believes a nuclear war happened. Where they finally get their first meal, they have a whole bread with milk. And from there, you see the amount of food dwindle down and the effects of it taking place. Weeks start to pass, they try to start farms, they scavenge the wasteland for food. The last meal the main character eats is this. A small piece of instant noodles. Having all these shallow resource problems culminating in Drake Bell telling the viewer we're going to do the things we're supposed to be doing now later, aka the time in this universe after the movie's over, is just... In the dream Kenny had last night, of us starting over, building a new world here, maybe that is our destiny. A little bit annoying. 
So as we start reaching the finale of the movie, the group decides to kill the monster. So they head to the cave the fat nerd kid found earlier. And it's revealed it's a nuclear reactor and apparently he believes this is the key to sending them back to their time. But for some reason the rest of the gang is really against the idea. Stop him! We can't let him do this! Excuse me, you're interfering with my work. But Paul, stop! No! Let me finish! You are finished! Look, shut it up, Paul, now! Why should I? Because we are asking politely, Paul. Come on, Paul. Get the hell away from me! Well, messing with it ends up causing the death of the teen male lead, so where's that? John! No! John! John! After the tragedy, the monster appears. What are you doing? Why are you not shut? Why you hug monster? Hey, Mr. Ugly! Over here! Man, I'm glad this is the last talk. Young Greg Bell's acting I'll listen to. Shoot, Kenny! Just shoot! Shoot, Kenny! Shoot, Kenny! Shoot! Shoot, Kenny! Okay, so he shoots and monster die, thanks you, Kenny. And after that predicament, they have enough energy to send someone back. But only the smallest person. So Kenny is to go back. We're gonna send you back to your mom and dad. I don't wanna go back, I wanna stay with you guys. There's no reason why uh, Kenny would say that. Several people dying around him. Famine. Thirst. I'm thirsty. Yeah, don't even say that, man. Uh, actually wishing to have made a decision that would lead you to not end up in this situation. I should have gone to the doctor. But yeah, fuck my parents. My mom wanted me to go to the doctor. Why would you want to stay in this hellhole if we never came here? Billy Drag would never kick you on the dick. Kenny, we're gonna use the laser gun to send you back. Let them know that we're still alive. That's what John would have wanted. You have to go back. You're the only one who can help us. Your mother is missing you. I don't want to go back. And so they send Kenny back. Yeah, I'm having second thoughts about this. I saw my gun kill stuff and not really Goodbye, Kenny. Goodbye, Kenny. Goodbye, Kenny. After Kenny floats on the space-time continuum, the remaining group heads back. Well, shit, things are the same. Little Todd didn't do anything. Actually, he did one thing. You are the last pioneers of hope, the chosen few. Please accept our contribution toward the building of a new and better world. We know what a tough job you all have ahead of you, but we have faith in you. Our prayers are with you always. Your president, Kenny Scott. He became world president. Keep the faith, guys. So he could write his name on the stone. And that was Drifting School 1995. What a shit show. But it was fun to talk about it in... My situation doesn't let you go crazy. <laughs>